In this example, we're going to set up an Enterprise Certificate Authority. Remember that unlike a standalone Certificate Authority, an Enterprise Certificate Authority is incorporated into Active Directory. As such, we must install Active Directory first. If you haven't set it up already, install Active Directory. Today we're going to set up an Enterprise Certificate Authority. And an Enterprise CA requires Active Directory, so the very first thing we need to do is install Active Directory and set up a domain. So I have two 2008 computers. This one's going to become a domain controller. And the second 2008 computer we're going to join to our domain as a member server. So it won't be a domain controller, but it will join the domain and be a domain member. And therefore have a computer account in Active Directory users and computers. On that second computer, we will actually set up certificate uh, services in our enterprise CA. Okay, and welcome to Active Directory Domain Services Installation Wizard. I'm going to choose Advanced Installation Mode. Next, next, I'm going to create a new domain in a new forest. Next, and we've done a lot with Battle Stars. Let's do pirates. Dot, uh, the seven seas. That'll be our uh, domain tree root and forest. <clears throat> Checking with the domain naming master to make sure that the domain tree and forest are unique. So pirates will be the NetBIOS name. We don't need backwards compatibility, so I'm going to go down and select Windows Server 2008 functional level. I want Active Directory to set up an Active Directory integrated DNS server for me and add all those wonderful service records um, and name server records and things for me. So I'm going to click Next and say Yes for the delegation. NTDS.dit and sysfall folder needs to be created as part of the Active Directory installation. I'll click Next. I need to supply my administrator password. This is the local admin password, which will eventually become the enterprise admin domain password as well. And let me just supply that. Be aware that you'll need a complex password, by the way, because password complexity is turned on by default when you install Active Directory. And then next and next. The only other thing you want to make sure, um, you know, beforehand I configured myself with a static IP. So you don't want a dynamic IP. You don't want DHCP configuring a domain controller, especially the first one you set up in Active Directory. That would be a bad idea. In addition, I set for the DNS server, I set the loopback 127.0.0.1 on the DNS server settings. And that's because in the Active Directory installation process, it will need to use itself as a DNS server to find service records and things and, and, and to locate, you know, global catalog and, and, and vital services and whatnot. So you'll want to manually configure those settings. You know, just right click on a network and go into TCP IP properties. And in this case, I'm using IP version 4. So I had statically configured my address, a Class C subnet mask. In this case, it's, my address is 192.0.7.13.200. Class C subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Um, the gateway is my router, 192.0.7.13.1. And then the, the DNS would be my loopback, all right, 127.0.0.1. And where I say a pause, that's a decimal in decimal notation. But just bringing that up as we go through the Active Victory Installation Wizard. And all done, I'll click finish and we'll reboot and log into our domain. Section 1. On Server 2, join the Active Directory domain you just created on Server 1. For me, that's going to be the Pirates the Seven Seas domain. Alright, so we took our first 2008 server and we ran DC Promo and we turned it into a domain controller and set up Active Directory. To implement an Enterprise Certificate Authority, we need to take our second 2008 server and join it to the domain. And anytime you have a vital server service, you probably want to configure a static IP. It's not to say that I couldn't do this on DHCP. I could, but it's not always a good idea. You want your IPs to stay the same for, you know, important servers like domain controllers or web servers or certificate services servers. So I put this second server on the, uh, a static IP, and the domain controller is 200. He's 201. And notice that I need to configure the... Preferred DNS server needs to be the IP address of the domain controller where I set up Active Directory. And the reason is, he's going to have to contact that Active Directory integrated DNS server to get all of the service records and information that he needs to, you know, join the domain, can create a computer account in Active Directory users and computers, find a global catalog, all of those things. So just wanted to show you that, I, that you know, he's set to static IP. 
And now to complete the process, I'm going to right-click on Computer, go to Properties, Advanced System Settings, Computer Name, Change. Notice he's part of a work group. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the domain name, which was Pirates. That the seven C's directory tree name and the forest name minus the either. Yeah, pirates at the seven C's. I'm going to click on OK. And I need to supply the enterprise admin credentials or domain admin, which before I ran DC promo were actually my local administrator credentials. OK, so I'll supply those. And now it'll go out. It's going to contact that Active Directory Integrated DNS server and the domain controller. It finds it. Welcome to the pirates, the seven C's domain. And now I just need to restart and then I'll have the option of both logging in locally or I can switch users and log into the domain. And a computer account will be in Active Directory users and computers. Note that when you have completed joining the server to the domain, it will have created a computer account in Active Directory users and computers on the domain controller. After having done that, notice that if I go to Active Directory users and computers, and I look at the computer accounts under Pirates the Seven Seas. Notice that now there's a computer account for the Pegasus. Note: Log into the domain on the Certificate Authority server. Do not log in locally. Now notice at the login screen, um, if I do Control Alt Delete, in this case I can log on to Pegasus as administrator, which would be locally. That's not what I want to do. If I'm going to set up an Enterprise Certificate Authority, I want to log into the domain. So I'm going to click Switch User, and I'm going to select Other User, and notice it says Log On to Pirates. Well, I want to use what's called the, you know, Distinguished Name or User Principal Logon Name. So I'm going to do the domain name Pirates, and a backslash, and then I'm going to do Administrator because I'll need administrative credentials, at least domain admin or enterprise admin credentials, and the password. And when I do this, you know, it'll give me the option of logging into the domain instead of logging into the local machine, and that's what we want. And I'll click on OK. And now it's going to complete the login process. It's actually building a temporary local desktop. So if I log in locally, I have one desktop, and if I log in uh, you know, via the domain, I have another desktop. Hence, I'm missing my background wallpaper. And I'm not going to show that startup when I log into the domain. I do want to set up my my nerdy, dorky, geeky wallpaper that I work so hard on in Photo Paint because I'm just really lame in Photoshop and I'm using tools that are 10 years old, but that's just me. Um, and in this case, we'll set up our wallpaper there. There. And so there's our wall, nice wallpaper. And now we're logged into the domain instead of the local machine we're ready to set up our certificate authority. Section 2. Install the Active Directory Certificate Services role on your new member server or server 2. So I've set up Active Directory and I have a domain controller which is the Galactica and now this is a member server. It's joined the domain. It's the Pegasus. Not a domain controller but a member server. They both have static IPs and I'm ready to go in and set up and implement the role of a Certificate Services Certificate Authority. To do that I just want to go to Server Manager. I'm going to select roles, and then I want to add the role. I want to go down here and select server roles. I want to tick the option Active Directory Certificate Services. So I'm going to check that option. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and Next. And then Certification Authority, I want, I want Certification Authority Web Enrollment, and I want Online Responder. And the only one I'm not going to check, and actually I couldn't, I mean, I could try, but I have to install Certificate Services first and then come back as this one. If I try, notice it tells me cannot install Network Device Enrollment Service. And again, I would have to completely install Certificate Service first, and then I could come back and add NDES. But that feature would allow things like routers and switches and network hardware devices to also request certificates in a Windows PKI, public key infrastructure, where they could request things from a Certificate Authority or Certificate Services. So all of these options except the one that we can't select, and I'm going to uh, click on Next. Notice my options are Standalone and Enterprise. The previous example that we did was Standalone, and they weren't domain controllers nor domain members. But this is going to be a domain member inside an Active Directory domain, and it's going to be Enterprise. And that will give us some neat Active Directory features that simply are not available with Standalone. 
So I'm going to click Next. And then do I want a root CA or a subordinate CA? And the idea behind this is, look, you're only really going to have one or maybe two root CAs. And then everybody else is going to be a subordinate CA. And the root CAs would issue certificates to the subordinate CAs to authorize them. And then the subordinate CAs would be the ones that actually respond to clients requesting things like email protection certificates and IPSEC certificates and authentication certificates. However, seeing as how I have limited resources and I don't have a lot of hardware here, we're just going to do a root CA and configure it accordingly. So I'm going to click on Next. And then I'm going to select the option to create a new private key. I don't want to use an existing one. Remember if you watch the introduction video that RSA is a typical algorithm used when generating you know, key pairs and things and one-way hashes. And we could choose several different options down here, but I'm going to go with the defaults, SHA-1, character length, you know, 2048. I could increase the character length and bit depth, but you know, if you do, remember that that greatly increases the processing time. You don't get anything for free. So the penalty or the price you're paying for secure traffic and encryption is just that you know, every time you encrypt and decrypt, you're using precious resources, CP cycles, a little bit of memory processes. In addition, your traffic, your bandwidth on the network greatly increases because you're not just sending the payload. You have to break the payload up and encapsulate it with sequence numbers if you're using IPSEC and you know, different types of encryption and things. So um, you have to kind of find a happy compromise between network performance and network security. They're not always compatible, nor are they compatible with convenience. Sometimes the more secure you make something, the less convenient it can become. So let's click on Next. The common name for this CA, I'm just going to go with Pirates Pegasus CA. So there's my domain name and there's my host name and it's a certificate authority and a root at that. Um, the default five years is good. I'm going to make it only, what is it, 11, two years. Because everyone knows the world's going to end in 2011, right? Ha <laughs> ha No, 2012. Okay, December 21st, 2012, yeah. Okay, maybe less than two years, but maybe that's just a conspiracy theory. Who knows? Hopefully it's wrong, but if not, oh well. So, certificate database location here in this case I want to place this you know I'm only joking don't please don't you know build an underground bunker and think the world's coming to an end because I said that I hope you you know um, disclaimer I do not claim any responsibility for doomsday cults thinking the world's going to end um, based on what I said I was you know hopefully I was joking well anyway okay off on a tangent scatterbrained back what were we talking about oh configure certification database okay so in this case, I could go with the default database location here, or I could place it in a different location. Now, ideally, in a production environment, I'd want to put this on a separate physical drive and a separate partition. And the reason is, is that drive can spin up and do seek operations, you know, simultaneously while the operating system drive is spinning up and doing its seek thing. And so I would get a lot more performance out of it that way. But in this case, you know, we're limited. Again, my resources are limited here. I have one hard drive, one partition, so I'm going to go with the default. Next and next and I'm going to go with the default options here and it's going to install some information services components so that I'll be able to accomplish web enrollment and my clients will be able to apply for certificates through internet information services I'm going to click next and finally I'm going to click on install to set up my enterprise certificate authority or if you're Cartman from South Park authority, authority, certificate authority I know I know stick to the facts I was trying to entertain you, hopefully not put you to sleep. But and installation is successful, and we've completed everything we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and close down everything, and we're done. Section three: Examine your certificate store and the new certificate authenticating your new certificate authority that was added. Use the commands gp update force and cert util v store. Once our certificate authority is set up, um, the, the CA adds a certificate to the local certificate store on that server that proves, uh, provides for the authenticity of that CA, that server. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm just going to change the colors here, hopefully to make it a little bit more readable for you guys. If you're watching these on YouTube. And go down and down. And First off, I want to update the certificate store if you know if I haven't rebooted or if it hasn't updated automatically. So GP update with a force option would do that. And that'll reflect any changes that have been made to my local certificate store. And then I'm going to use the cert util tool. We talked about that before in terms of backing up and restoring um, certificate services in a CA. 
but we're going to use the view store option. Okay, so cert util in view store. When I do that, this little window pops up and it shows me my certificate. So I'm just going to pull this box over here. And I want to kind of look for the one that matches. In this case, you know, here's the one that matches my particular server. And this is the Pegasus. So there's my host name and there's my domain name now that I've created. I'm going to click on view certificate. And if I do, I can look at some of the details. Here's the version, you know, here's the issuer, pirates, the domain, and Pegasus, the host name of the server. I can go to the certification path, and you know, I'm the only one here because it's a root CA and there's no subordinates under it. But what if I were a subordinate CA and there were root CAs above me and you know it would show the certification path were that to be the case? Okay, so we you know we've taken a look at that. And then of course there's also the local certificate store, which we were looking at at standalone, but if I do a Microsoft Management Console. And add remove snap-ins, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to add my user account, and I'm going to add computer account. That's just a local. And then also notice this third option here, service account. And if I do that next, notice that I can go down and there's all of these built-in service accounts, Active Directory certificate services, and just you know all of the you know basic services and things 2008 has to offer and, and Windows components have their own service accounts and just as an example I'll add one of those don't really need it uh, not, not right now anyway but again I can examine the certificates I may have so you know user certificates or anything that I had enrolled for trusted root certification authorities and some of the built-in certificates as well as the one for our own CA if I come down here notice there are certificates and under local computer under personal, here's a personal certificate. In this case, you know, I'm just trusting the CA, the issuer. And then same thing, you know, trusted root certification authorities, just different things. Let's take a look at this one. And this is Active Directory Certificate Services. I'll pull this over here so on local computer that you can see that. And certificate services personal and just going going down and looking at some of these objects and things here. So that's you know two ways you can use to cert you total. You can use snap-ins in a Microsoft Management Console. I'm not going to save this here on the desktop, so I don't have to recreate it. Be a nice tool, and we'll just call it certificates. We can add more snap-ins there later if we so choose. And so there's our tool.